Property in Georgetown, uh, the neighborhood in DC, of course, sells for a lot, for millions in many cases. But something popped up online recently for the low, low price of $50,000. It's a fixer upper, Jean, mm -hmm. a fixer upper in Georgetown. But there is a catch. Uh, the property isn't a home, it isn't even a plot of land someone could build a home on. It's literally just this, a brick wall. <sighs> okay, so that is a literal listing. That is a screenshot of the listing from Zillow. You can see the Zestimate there. Eight people have saved it. Well, <laughs> so look. The Zestimate is none. I've literally never seen that before. Look, it's, it's identified as a plot of land that someone might not even be able to build a home on. I, I don't know if I buy that. I think maybe you'd be able to put a tiny home there. The point is you're paying for the plot of land. Well, I don't know. So first of all, it says the opportunities are limitless. So try to free your mind, Anna Kasparian. Oh, I'm very um, free. It says 22 square feet. Oh, I missed that, sorry. So that can't include the land behind the wall. It's probably just the wall. It's probably a foot deep and 22 feet long. Oh my God. Now, technically, you're getting some vertical you know, height there. So it could be a thin, tiny house. Uh, I don't understand how you sell a one foot wide plot of land. Like, I don't think it's legally just up to you to div subdivide your land into whatever tiny portion you want. So how exactly are they selling just the wall? Well, why don't we hear from Robert Morris, uh, the real estate agent attempting to sell mm -hmm. said wall. So the real estate agent selling the wall on behalf of its owner, Alan Berger uh, had this to say, quote, it's like crumbling. What can you do with the freaking wall? <laughs> I don't know, Robert, you signed on to try to sell it. You tell, you tell me. MAGA America thinks it's a solution to literally every problem our country has. So the list ship it south. The <laughs> listing has gotten a lot of attention on social media for obvious reasons, um, but it's not a joke, this is real, this is a real listing. I thought maybe it might be a mistake, maybe mm -hmm. it is a joke. Um, but it's far from a joke according to the Wall's neighbor uh, or neighbors. Records show it's been the subject of at least $1,600 in fines for infractions, which Berger denied. And an office of administrative here in an office of administrative hearings case. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? I just don't I, I just don't I don't understand how it, you can't do that. Like you can't be like, well, I'm just gonna divide my land into a whole bunch of little strips of 18 inches wide and then sell it off. Is it some sort of like was the land like divided in that way 150 years ago? You said it's in DC, so theoretically it could be super old. So the wall is attached to a home belonging to another person, a woman by the name of Daniela. This is a joke, her name's Daniela Walls. Her name is Daniela Walls, that's her name. Mm -hmm. this, this, this has to be a joke. Anyway, so what started as a friendly relationship between Berger and Walls has unfortunately devolved. Walls says that the walls deteriorating structural integrity directly impacts her house. Berger accused the woman of stabbing him in the back. Um, so more info on the wall and uh, how Berger got the wall in his possession, even though it's attached to someone else's home. So his father and a friend went into a tax auction sometime during Berger's childhood, saw a wall for sale and his father thought, ah, oh, great. I could say I own property in Georgetown. Deed records show a buyer purchased the wall in the 1960s for $2.14 and later sold it to Berger's father. Whatever the wall had once been attached to was gone. Some believe it was once part of a historic hotel, but how, how? Yeah. It's 22 square feet. Yeah. Now, after his father's death, Berger said the wall eventually landed with him. Now, until now, Berger said he wasn't interested in keeping the wall, which faces a parking lot because it reminded him of his dad's sense of humor. Plus, he enjoyed showing it off. Now, you can go there, take a girl out on a date, go walk around and say, see, I own that. Super hot. I mean, that'll just 
that'll clinch the whole thing. Totally, like she'll Obviously. marry you. Like you should propose right then and Definitely. there. Definitely, I mean the dowry yeah. could be several bricks. Now after Wal Walls moved into the conjoining home in 2019, the woman that Berger is now in a dispute with, it wasn't soon after the problem started. Like soon after that, the problems began, right? So problems began around May of 2020 when water was leaking inside her home, Walls, called an engineer to assess the damage and said she learned the structural beams of her house were tied into the south side wall. What? The one It's she, a brick wall. You uh, you never know. You never know, John. I don't think I will ever know, actually. I don't think any of us will ever know, okay? Uh, but let me continue. So uh, by the way, that is possible. She learned the structural beams of her house were tied into the south side wall. The one she did not completely own, a lack of upkeep, she said, caused the beams to become wet. And you do not but want wet beams. I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, ben Shapiro told me. So it's a house, and then there's a wall here. How many of the beams could be in that wall? It's a foot wide. How does that work? It's not a foot wide. The wall? Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the wall goes this way right. and hits her house. The beams, there's not room for them to, she should just push the wall over, honestly. I don't think anyone would care at this point. I want to know who owns the land behind the wall. And they said, whatever it used to be connected to is gone. Sure, at one point it was connected to a building, but presumably they were part of the same thing. How did they get separated into different plots of land? And why has nobody built anything on the land behind it, which seems like perfectly good land? Yeah, it seems like there are some details missing here, right? Like why? Is this wall attached to her home in someone else's possession? Like, why does it belong to someone else? Like, obviously, something happened with the zoning. Maybe they divvied up the, the two plots of land in such a way. Can we send Schuster or something? Can we send a reporter to check this Can out? Can you imagine using resources for this? I think we want to know. <laughs> I mean, I am curious about it. So I feel like this is going to be tied into like a reboot of the National Treasure series of movies or something. It's in DC, it's got history. George Washington's skull is beneath the wall or something. So um, since these issues were related to a part of the wall that walls didn't own, um, Berger was given two fines totaling the $1,661. And he denies the claims of improper upkeep and uh, feels like this was an attack against him. And eventually Wall's attorney uh, decided, you know, decided that like she needs to take this issue to court, made an offer, uh, Walls would buy the wall for roughly $600, mm -hmm. um, which you know is its tax assessed value. But Berger's like, not enough, okay? Mm -hmm. 600 bucks, not enough, I want more money. That's when I came up with $50,000 without any research, without any great thought. For better or for worse. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those two, I think. I love, I love this citation there. What Let's go the back citation? to that graphic. Alan Berger, wall owner. <laughs> now, Walls said she does not have a spare $50,000 to simply buy the uh, second half of her wall, in addition to uh, her estimated cost of $25,000 to repair it and tens of thousands of dollars to um, insure and maintain it. But some are actually interested in buying this because some people just like to waste money, 12 people to be exact. They asked about painting murals or okay. posting advertisements, but Morris told them they would need to get approval from the old Georgetown board, an advisory board of architects that review projects. In response, almost all of them decided they were no longer interested except one person who asked to schedule a showing. That one potential buyer also decided though to ultimately walk away, we don't know why. I love, I get the idea of a showing for a house or an apartment. You want a showing for the wall, it, it's that wall, mm -hmm. that's what it is. You know, during the pandemic, people bought homes out of town, out of state without ever seeing the homes. Mm -hmm. Like they looked at the images that were posted on the listings, but yeah. which, 
I don't recommend anyone do. People get desperate. People do get desperate. The housing market is awful. I admit that. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you about the wall. Like the the wall is the wall. If you want to spend fifty thousand dollars on a useless wall, that's actually mm-hmm. going to give you some problems. Apparently, it's yeah. it's a bad investment. It's not NFT bad, but it's it's a bad investment. It's close, it's close. Yeah, uh, could someone in our audience please call the old Georgetown board who apparently has information about the history of architecture in this area and try to come to some sort of understanding of what's going on with the wall? What is the craziest listing that you've seen? Like. I mean, look, there's there's a subreddit that just does insane like Craigslist like listings for apartments and stuff. I've seen things, I've seen whole apartments that are done up to look like the interior of the spaceships in Alien. I've seen really of spooky dungeons have. and course, things like that. Of course, you've seen those things. Um, <laughs> I've seen, there was one listing, I don't think it was serious. It was for an apartment and every every picture was perfectly reasonable. It would just be some kitchen or whatever. But like with each photo you go, like in the first one, you see in the window someone's like hair poking up over the window. And each photo, it's clearer and clearer that someone in a Mike Myers costume is like standing with a knife until in the final thing they're right in front of the camera. I don't think they ever sold that place. <gasps> um, but that was at least a house. Like you'd be right, murdered right. inside of a bunch of walls. It's interesting. You definitely delivered um, mm-hmm. for my question. Thank you. I was I was thinking more in terms of five hundred square foot studio apartment <laughs> on the market for two point five million dollars. Oh, like that's that's the kind of stuff I, I come once, across a lot. I once went and talked in Santa Monica. There was an apartment that was just the room above like a garage. It it didn't have its own bathroom. What? I don't know exactly how that's supposed to work. I did not rent it. I will say. I mean, did they at least put a bucket in the corner for the I buyer? think you have to provide your own bucket. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.